Yes. Welcome everybody to the second episode of our podcast. It's me, your boy, Nigel the Slick Pastor, with my good brother and friend Alicia Santa Keys giving us some nice music in the background. So um, today we want to talk about taking care of yourself. I want to encourage everybody who is listening to this message to be able to take care of yourself. You should be able to look after yourself and to love yourself. Look, um, Jesus is in Jesus in one of the scriptures. He said that you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. That means in Jesus' mind, the highest measure that a man can ever be able to extend love to somebody else is the measure to which they love themselves. So that means I cannot love anybody 80% when I love myself 40%. I cannot love anybody 100% when I love myself 60%. You only give what you already have. So the love that you extend to other people is a reflection of the love that you you have uh, brought upon yourself. It's an expression of how you see yourself. It's a reflection of how much you love yourself. So this is why it's important. A lot of people sometimes when we talk about um, taking care of yourself or loving yourself and self-love and stuff like that, it sounds selfish. But yeah, of course I know there's uh, certain people who have taken this in the wrong context. They've, you know, dragged it to the like uh, most perverted extremes, and they 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 take self love to be selfishness, to be disregarding everybody else, to be looking down on everybody else. But basically, in simple terms, what self love means, or taking care of oneself, what it means, is being able to know the needs that you have as a human being and making sure that those needs are met in order that you may function at your highest level of potential or highest level of capability. So that way is the only way that you can be a blessing to the people around you. That way is the only way that you can be able to help other people if you're able to help yourself. Uh, in, in, In another scripture, I think Paul talks about the husbands loving their wives the same way they they love their own bodies so he is basing this on the common sense that there is nobody who would hate his own body so anybody who hates his wife hates his spouse um, is a reflection of the the hate that they have imposed upon themselves. So I'm just going to highlight and show you why it's really, really important for you to be able to love yourself and to take care of yourself. So it's very important. So let's get into it. I, I, I just wanted to share to you uh, first why it's really important, why you should. Now, the how part, because I know a lot of you know people share messages and they talk about stuff like you should do this or uh, put yourself first and stuff like that but they don't really break it down to what it means what are the actual practical steps what are the actual practical steps that I have to take in order to practice self-love in order to take care of myself better so let me put it this way I know you may have some questions comments remarks or Uh, a bit of misgivings on the principles that I'm going to lay as a foundation in order that we move forward. But here's what I believe. I believe that a human being is a tripartite being. Is a tripartite being. It means you are made up of three parts, right? So you are a spirit. You live in a body and you have a soul. You are a spirit. You live in a body and you possess a soul, you have a soul. In simple terms, you are a spirit who lives in a body and has a mind. So when when I use the term soul here, I'm just referring to your mind, to your intellect, to to, to your emotions, to your will, to your desires, to your ability to make choices and stuff like that. And then your spirit is that part of you that was created by God. It is the actual you. It is that part that leaves your body when we say somebody has died. Okay, so now that we've established that, I hope you understand or I hope you believe that for the rest of the inf- information to make sense. But still, if you have any questions or comments, please drop them down in the comment section and we'll see if there is any need to elaborate further, particularly just on these three things. But anyway, we've established that you are a spirit, 
you have in a you you live in a body so that means you are not your physical body so whether you're light you're tall you're short you're, you're dark um whatever it is your physical body is not you it doesn't define you that's why even when god looks at us god doesn't consider our physical bodies if you read in the book of samuel when david was chosen to be a king when he was anointed by samuel um when samuel had been sent he looked at david's brothers the ones that were in the house and he looked uh, at one of his brothers and he thought wow this is the guy who's fit to be king he's this tall he's got wide shoulders he's got a nice chest he's he 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 looks kingly man i mean <laughs> if you look at his physical body this is the guy who could walk into your room and you'd say the king is here but god stopped him and he corrected him and he said no he's not the one that i've chosen i've chosen somebody else because i do not look outwardly but i look at the heart i do not look at what people look at but i look at the heart so that means god does not consider our physical bodies because our physical bodies are not us so this is why even when the gospel is shared it doesn't matter whether you're asian you're um european you are african you're black you're white you're blue it doesn't really matter because your body is not you now but you are a spirit who lives in a body your spirit is that part of you that was created by god when the bible talks about people being created and formed in the image of god and in the likeness of god it is it is referring to their spirit so we need to then know how we can take care of our spirit how we can take care of our body because it's still important because we use it to live in this earth and how we take care of our minds so let's break it down so first and foremost your spirit only relates to spiritual things no matter how much food you eat in a day your spirit does not gain any calories or weight or or strength based on the amount of physical food that you have had in a day no matter how much exercise you may partake in no matter how many squats you do no matter how many lifts you do no matter you know how many sprints you do how many kilometers you run or whatever you do in this physical no matter how much sweat you lose in your body your spirit doesn't gain a thing so this is why even when jesus would sometimes talk to people and he would say um if you accept the son of man you will have life he looked at them as being dead even though he was talking to people who were actually walking about putting on their clothes people had built houses but because they were spiritually dead god considered them as dead so in order for your spirit to benefit it only benefits from spiritual things what things are these reading the word of god meditating on the word of god and praying speaking to god worship worshiping to god now our bodies and our minds do not directly benefit when we pray or even when we fast our bodies actually are subjected to some sort of pain and discomfort but our spirits are energized and they are strengthened because that is the actual you so you connect to god anytime that god wants to talk to you god does not communicate to you on a physical um in the physical realm or on a physical basis god doesn't communicate to you physically but god speaks to you spiritually that's why in the word of god in john chapter 4 verse 24 it says god is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so what matters to god is our spiritual relationship with him not the uniform that we wear when we go to church not the clothes that we put on when we're in praise and worship and stuff like that so you need to watch over your spirit you need to take care of your spirit and you do that by feeding your spirit with the word of god you do that by feeding your spirit with prayer talking to god fellowship with god and fellowship with the holy spirit this is how your spirit benefits now we move on to your soul i know some bibles and some versions of uh, text use the term soul and spirit interchangeably but for the purpose of this uh, podcast and the purpose of this talk um, the soul refers to your intellect your will and your emotions basically we can say it refers to your mind how do you take care of your mind you need to take care of your mind that's that's why um, that's the, the same soul is um what some authors or or, or 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 scriptures refer to as the heart so that's why jesus said out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh 
uh, it's not referring to the spirit, but it's referring to things that have that that have filled your mind, that have filled your will, that have filled your intellect, and that have filled your emotions. Also, the Bible talks about um, in the book of Proverbs. It says, uh, "Guard your heart diligently, for out of it come the issues of life. For out of it flow the issues of life." In in, in James, he says a very important. Uh, thing and he says that um, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways so that means you need to take care of your mind how do you do that a lot of us are careless with the information that get into our, that gets into our minds right now sometimes when people are eating people are very picky and careful about what they're eating they'll be like oh i cannot take this food because it wasn't prepared nicely or i cannot take this food because this place is not hygienic it's not clean so I am likely, my body is likely to suffer um, if, if I take this food. I may fall sick. I, I cannot take this food. It has too much fat. It has too much cholesterol. It is too much um, acid. It is too much this and that. So people have this understanding that um, certain anomalies or certain um, high concentrations of certain things in their food, the physical food they take, will damage their bodies. But it is surprising that people are not careful with the information that they let into their minds. Some of it is too much negativity, which, which I would equate to too much fat or too much cholesterol or too much acid or too much whatever, you know, or too much spice or too much sugar.